Thank you for joining us today on Edfile. Welcome to the program. I'm Ayola Kasim. Scientists generally agree that climate change does not directly cause armed conflict, but that it may indirectly increase the risk of conflict by exacerbating existing social, economic, and environmental factors. For example, when cattle herders and agricultural farmers are pushed to share diminishing resources due to a changing climate, this can stir tensions in places that lack strong governance and inclusive institutions. We've seen this happen in many places across the world, even here in Nigeria. We have seen that insecurity limits people's ability to cope with climate shocks, and women tend to be the most affected. But then, what efforts are in place to stop it? We try to answer this on today's episode of Earth File. Do stay with us. In early 2019, grazing land became scarce south of Gao due to floods. This reminded the old folks of a similar incident in the 1970s when West Africa was hit by a long drought that led to famine. But unlike what happened in the 70s, people here couldn't even search for food. They were forced to stay in place or move to cities because of the insecurity. Pastoralists were worried about traveling with their livestock for fear of being attacked by armed groups or bandits. Instead, they often gathered in areas close to water sources, creating tensions with farmers and fishermen. As their animals became weaker, herders were forced to sell them at discounted prices. Insecurity prevented them from reaching livestock markets for their afield, where they could have hoped for better prices. State officials and potential state support were absent because of the violence. Violence also considerably limited humanitarian access. In short, impoverished herders watched their only assets wither and were left struggling to feed their families. Researchers have found that there are three pathways to armed conflict once climate change encounters these conditions. First, the effect of climate change worsen livelihoods and push more people into violent conflict in countries with ongoing armed conflicts. Second, changes in climate patterns transform pre-existing latent conflicts into violent conflict. And the third is that changes in climate patterns worsen livelihoods and force some groups, especially nomadic pastoralists, to migrate to regions inherited by other groups. This migration leads to tensions and armed conflicts. In the issues of violent conflict and in context of fragility, especially in the agricultural sector, most of the women that are displaced from their homes, from their farmlands, and some of them, their husbands, have been killed as a result of this uh, violent or conflict. Now, a lot of them have children. They don't know where their next meal is going to come from. And that is why sometimes you see them on the street begging. It's not because they want to beg, but because they don't have any option. So how do we, in, in, I mean, empower them economically so that we can take them off the street? Those are some of the challenges that I face or our organization face on a daily basis because they keep reaching out to us on how to handle these situations. The Women Environmental Program and its partners seek to strengthen the existing structures of the communities, facilitate resolution of disputes within and between communities, raise awareness against violent extremism, and enhance skills of women and youths for improved livelihoods to prevent recruitment and radicalization of young men and young women as well as reduce food insecurity among target community members through climate smart agriculture practices. If you, if you take a look at what Katsina has experienced in the past few years, or okay, for instance, let me begin from the northeast, the result of um, the eruption of conflict in the northeast leading to insurgency and banditry, and now Katsina in the northwest is um, having a heat of such because of the, the migration of uh, bandits 
and these people perpetrating this crime from the northeast down to the northwest. So in our baseline study, it was found that the Katsina also is very prone to having these um, banditry activities. And as a matter of fact, the, 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 the presence is here and the effect is already been felt by most communities in Katsina state. Of course, we have a series of reports of um, attacks, banditry attacks in most LGAs, and most of these communities now are no-go areas. You cannot find the original indigenous of such communities living there. So usually, one of the components of this um, pillar of um, peace and conflict, we, we build resilience in such communities that have this post-conflict experience. And that is basically why we found Women Environmental Program on this project advocating against violence extremism being implemented in Katsina State. So this project also has a component of climate smart agriculture, where, of course, um, Katsina State is an agrarian state, and most people make their living from farming that peasant farmers and we've encouraged them, we have introduced new technologies that are even much easier for them to engage in farm work and we have encouraged um, um, irrigation farming where they can farm all through the year to be able to make a living. So by all of this we hope and already we are seeing results that a good number of youths, women and men within these communities have really regained their momentum and are settling down already with most of these activities because they've gotten a, a means of livelihood. The farmers too have been encouraged even with improved seas to, to have an, a much richer yield or harvest at the end of the time. And already they have sent in their testimonies that the receipts they receive cut across rice, maize that they have farmed, they have really been improved. So they have been so we hope that even their economic income will be improved on at the end of these activities. Across societies, the impact of climate change affects women and men differently. Women are often responsible for gathering and producing food, collecting water and sourcing fuel for heating and cooking. With climate change, these tasks are becoming more difficult. Extreme weather events such as droughts and floods have greater impact on the poor and most vulnerable. 70% of the world's poor are women. Climate Smart Agriculture is teaching them on how they can use more land to get so many yield. And that is what we are talking about issues of uh, 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 value change products. How can they uh, transform these the producers to transform it to the our consumers and the marketers, how can they, how can they do this? So we're working on so many areas. Women in particular have been benefiting from so many projects. We train them on so many things. We give them empowerment. We build their capacity. They are, we give them awareness. We conduct workshops on so many programs, most especially issues that relate to Education, we emphasize the education of the, of the girl child. We try to see that, okay, when uh, we are working on issues of uh, helping the, uh, the, to give the woman the voice, because every time you see that women are being brought back down, especially in our society, women are not allowed to talk. They don't have voice, so we try to make them to to seek for their rights. Most of the time, women are called to, to speak out, to make sure that they are more empowered. So that, because we have seen that most of the time they are more vulnerable. Vulnerable in the sense that if the woman dies, he leaves her with the children, and the children become useless in the society. And that is why we are seeing a lot of uh, conflict, a lot of children that are going to be hired by bandits and they are going to so many issues. So part of what we are doing too, we have conducted, uh, we have partnered with Women Environmental Program. And we have done a lot of issues working around women. 
We have trained women a cross-border training between Nigeria and Niger women on how to do trade, on how to exchange goods, on how to bring goods into the country, on how to go and sell their pro uh, products, and so on and so forth. Despite women being disproportionately affected by climate change, they play a crucial role in climate change adaptation and mitigation. Women is said to have the knowledge and understanding of what is needed to adapt to changing environmental conditions and to come up with practical solutions. But they are still a largely untapped resource. Restricted land rights, lack of access to financial resources, training and technology, and limited access to political decision-making spheres often prevent them from playing a full role in tackling climate change and other environmental challenges. Unleashing the knowledge and capability of women presents an important opportunity to craft effective climate change solutions for the benefit of all. The Women Environmental Program is working to change this narrative. In Paris, when the Gender Action Plan was approved by parties, it, the responsibility was charged to the different countries to go and develop their own action plan. Most of them, most of the countries, including the developed countries, as at this moment have not been able to develop their own action plan. But we came back and we worked with the government of Nigeria and we were able to have the first ever national action plan on gender, I mean, and climate change. Uh, starting from 2015 to 2021, uh, precisely 2020, we worked, we partnered, we collaborated with the Federal Minister of Environment and we were able to have the first ever National Action Plan on Gender and Climate Change, which President Buhari himself approved it during the Executive Council meeting in 2020. And that action plan was officially launched in August 2021. And since that action plan was launched, we have done capacity building of not just civil society organization, but also government officials, especially the North Central States, for them to be able to drive the processes of implementing this national action plan at the state level. And we have been building capacity in different areas of ICT for development for women, because, you know, women farmers, most of them, they have the issues of storage, they have the issues of transportation, generally infrastructure but the issues of market access after producing. So what happens? Most of them, their produce, they cannot sell them because first, they don't have the skills of marketing these products. And secondly, the issues of access to markets is also a problem. And of course, the issues of pricing. So as an organization, we are looking from the holistic perspective of this on addressing these issues. You discover that in the political arena, in the country today. At the Senate, we have less than 5% women as senators. At the House of Reps, it's the same thing. So those are the challenges that women are facing in terms of decision making, in policy making. But a country as big as Nigeria, if we don't have women in position, their mothers, they are also wives, they are also sisters. And of course, what affects them is very critical. What affects our children, what affects our husband is very critical. And we need to sit at the table to be able to discuss this. As women, we need to understand what are the gender issues in climate change and how do we address those issues when it comes to negotiations and decision making but also policy directions. It is so decided. United Nations climate change negotiations, void of gender-related texts and discussions until 2008, have more recently reflected an increased understanding of the links between gender equality and responding to climate change. What we have done here with the Lima call for climate action, it is your work. The Lima work program on gender adopted at COP20 in 2014, for example, promotes gender balance, 
and achieving gender-responsive climate policy. Climate change increasingly affects agricultural productivity and exacerbates post-harvest losses, particularly among women smallholder farmers in Nigeria. A report by Nigerian Stored Products Research Institute indicates that Nigeria suffered 50% post-harvest losses in agriculture annually, and this is estimated at the economic cost of 3.5 trillion naira annually to the agricultural sector. This solar dryer tent being presented to the tomato and pepper seller in Benue is said to be crucial for smallholder women farmers in Nigeria as it reduces post-harvest losses and also reduces dependency on traditional sun-drying methods which are unreliable and time-consuming. But why did we come here? One is for economic purposes, for the women who are engaged in tomato and pepper farming activities which during post-harvest, there are a lot of losses. And so we felt that there was the need to address these post-harvest losses, but also the impact of climate change on the community. So yes, aside from the post-harvest losses, we also look at the issues of technology, using the solar dryer tent because this is not the usual solar that you know. This is quite different from the solar dryers that people know. This is like a greenhouse where you can dry everything, including pepper, tomato, okra, and every other perishable crops that can be packaged. This is very hygienic. Uh, this is um, also during off-season, this can be used for reselling and therefore bringing in economic benefits to the women. It also addresses the issues of health issues where normally when you dry things like okra, pepper, off, uh, in, the, in the open where you have flies that are perching on it. But here you have the solar dryer tent that there is no need to talk about flies perching on it. And so it's very healthy and of course for the economic benefits and it addresses the post-harvest losses. A need assessment conducted by the Women Environmental Program to gather qualitative insight from women farmers regarding their experiences, challenges and potential solutions related to climate change impact and post-harvest losses shows the lack of appropriate storage facilities. Climate change-related factors, such as unpredictable rainfall patterns and extreme weather events, further exacerbate post-harvest losses and make it difficult for women farmers to preserve their produce effectively. Africa is already food insecure. We know that uh, women take care of the families, Women are the farmers, especially the small-scale farmers. Women plant crops, including tomatoes, that are perishable. And that preservation of the perishable goods is very key. The project we have launched today will enable the farmers, men and women, but mostly the women, who are involved in perishable uh, goods farming to be able to preserve the food for long. This is technology that is being uh, introduced in our communities in Africa and especially in, in Nigeria within this community to help preserve the food stuff. While you try the food, it will enable you to make savings. The women will be able to sell the food at a later time, at a cost that is almost equivalent to what they would have sold when the food was fresh. The solar panels have been known to preserve the food content and therefore the more we adopt this technology, the more we shall contribute to the Nigerian government of wanting to make Nigeria a food secure community. 
Yearly, those who grow crops face a huge challenge of post-harvest losses, especially those who produce highly perishable crops. Across the globe, approximately 14% of the world's food, valued at $400 billion, is lost on an annual basis between harvest and the retail market. At the same time, an estimated 17% of food is wasted at the retail and consumer levels. These losses occur during storage, both at the farm and market, during processing, or during transportation from the farm to the market. These losses eventually reduce the amount of food available, which in turn hikes prices and reduces farmers' income. In Nigeria, about 80% of tomato seeds planted by farmers are generic varieties, which tend to spoil faster. In addition, there is a lack of access to basic logistics facilities or services such as transport. In some cases, farmers do not have access to market or receive low prices from the sales of their produce. This is particularly common during the dry season, which runs from December through April. During this time, the market is flooded with tomatoes, making it very difficult for farmers to earn a good price for their produce. Furthermore, yearly, we have about 4.4 gigatons of greenhouse gas emissions that are caused by food loss and waste. This is inclusive of the energy used in producing, transporting and storing the ultimately lost or wasted food and agricultural emissions on the farm. I believe it can sustain impact in terms of not just economically, but also it's very sustainable because the materials used are materials that are found in the community and this is something that can last for up to 10 years so long as it's maintained properly by the women. This project is also an avenue to reduce, it reduces greenhouse gas and it helps in the, uh, in the reduction of fossil fuels as well. Next so, thing I am asking my program to do is to try and empower you with alternative dispute resolution mechanisms. When you come and you find your colleagues came earlier than you, the law of nature deserves that they be served first before you, isn't it? So do not come fighting to be number one when you came number 20. True or false? Yes, because we have given you a very good project, but I know within a short time, you will be calling us back to resolve your conflict. Addressing the Security Council high-level open debate on the impact of climate change and food insecurity, on the maintenance of international peace and security, a global food the United Nations Secretary General urged a worldwide response to the challenges posed by climate-driven food insecurity and conflict saying that climate and conflict Without were the main causes of acute food event. insecurity Conflicts for almost 174 million people in 2022. A global food crisis is creating a hellscape of anger and heartache for many of the world's poorest people. And the climate crisis is accelerating with a deadly force and last year was the hottest ever. Both these facts undermine peace empty bellies, fuel and rest. The UN chief called for global action to build a livable, sustainable future, free from hunger and free from the scourge of war. At the same time, climate and conflict are two leading drivers of global food crisis. Where wars rage, anger reigns. Whether due to the displacement of people, destruction of agriculture, damage to infrastructure, of deliberate policies of denial. Meanwhile, climate chaos is imperiling food production the world over. Floods and droughts destroy crops. Ocean changes disrupt fishing. Rising seas degrade land and fresh water and shifting weather patterns ruin harvests and spawn pests. In his call to action, Mr. Guterres outlined several Without critical steps to mitigate the these threats, including adherence to international humanitarian law and full funding of humanitarian operations. Without action, the situation will deteriorate. Conflicts are multiplying. 
The climate crisis is set to spiral as emissions continue to rise and acute food insecurity has been increasing year on year. The World Food Programme estimates that over 330 million people were affected in 2023 and it has warned of an acute deterioration in 18 anger hotspots earlier this year. To avoid mounting threats to international peace and security, we must step in and act now to break the deadly links between conflict, climate and food insecurity. Giving hope and providing the necessary support to those who have survived conflict and judge unpredictable weather conditions to produce crops has been said to be the necessary step needed to surmount the dangers climate change pose to the food system. Well, that's our show for the week. Thank you for watching our inbox at file at channelstv.com. It's available for all your comments and questions.